with the shows of Kaito, uh, if I have the kill count 6 and the check of the enemy, have the kill count 5, now I will reset all of that. You see that's all that's come down to 0. Hi, welcome to my channel. This time, let me show you an editor tool that helps you reset your scriptable object values to 34 values. For the sample scene, I have this character right here. I can just move around, and every time it's got a cube, the UIs gonna be updating the value. Which have been saved in the scriptable object right here. So, the thing with that scriptable object doesn't actually save your value. In your editor, is act like an UD access. So you will see that it will trick you by saving those values right here. But in your real applications, it doesn't. And it just kind of annoys us every time we want to get an entirely new game. We have to go to any scriptable objects at a time and reset it to the, the four values. For example, in here, if I want to reset the queue count, I have to go to the scriptable objects and change it to zero. So today, I will show you a little tools that will help you automate that process. And with just one click of button, everything will went back to the four values, and it will save you a bunch of time and save you a bunch of headache. Let's get started. First. Let's start by creating a menu item. We're gonna create an city method. I will call it recess. SO stands for scriptable object. And I'm gonna add an attribute. Let's call it menu item. And I'm gonna pass a string which is a part to this button. I will call it tools slash recess as a data okay so I will lost something to make sure it's work now let's see in the editor you will see that in the tool section we have this button called recess as a data and every time we click it, it will lock something out. So that's cool. Now, what we'll do is we're gonna get an array of GUIDs of our scriptable object. We will do that by using access database, file access. And I'm gonna pass and the columns with the type of the scriptable objects that we want to get. In this case, I have a scriptable object called character which has a values called Q counts. Let's grab it. Character and this boo return a string array I will call it GUID okay everything seems fine now how about we lock this GUID out I will use a simple for loop and I'm gonna look through this array and I'm gonna lock GUID which index of I. So let's see. In two, I will click recess as all data. You will see that it's already locked out. Two GUIDs, which stand for two of my scriptable objects. The next thing we will do is we're gonna get the access part 
of that scrutable object based on its UID and we're gonna do that by using access database dot GUID to access bar and I'm gonna pass the GUID that I then I'm gonna lock those access paths for you guys to see and to see if our application is running correctly and for some of you uh, this tutorial has some weird syntax that you might find unfamiliar and if so you can just pause the video and just copy all of that I think you will get along as well now let's see the results in the editor In the editor, we will click Tools, Reset SO Data, and you will see that it's already locked. The path to the scriptable objects. For me, I had two scriptable objects named Joe and Lily, which are here. The next thing that you will do is we're gonna grab the reference to these character scriptable objects by using its access path. We're gonna initialize a new character object by using assets database load asset at part and I'm gonna pass this part which the type of character as character. There you go. Now, in the characters that scriptable objects, I will create a new method called recess count. And then in this method, I'm gonna recess as count to zero. And in here, I will call this method. I'm sorry. It will be the test Q count. That's all. Now, let's see in the editor. You will see that after it gets to Q, the Q count in here get updated in the show scriptable object. Now, I will stop the application and I'm, I'm gonna play again you will see that it will still persist here however now I will use to recess as later you will see this now it's all gonna be zero and when I play the game the values of the kill count have been recessed and she will have a brand new games just like you have when you build your applications. The next thing as I want to show you guys is find a way to refactor this solution to more generic way. And I'll do that by creating a generic method which will turn a list of any scriptable object. I will call it get at O and also a generic type here. And in this case, I want the generic type is derived from the scriptable object. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to copy this lab code. And instead of getting the type of the character, we're going to get the type, we're going to get the generic type. Similarly, we copy all those live code 
then I'm gonna pass the generate type instead of the character in this case I will correct a genetic list I mean I will call it scriptable object then I'm gonna add the scriptable objects that I just found from the GUID to the scriptable object list. Let's rename this to SO right here. Yeah, that's fine. And I'm gonna return a scriptable object here. And now I will create another method for you guys to see the difference reset IO uh, generic generic version let's copy the menu item then I'm gonna create a list of character and I will call it characters will be equal to SSO character there we go and now I will loop through this character list then I will recess the cube count In the editor, let's change the Q count shows to 5. And let's see if the generated change that we made work just fine or not. I'll click 2 and reset generic data. And you will see that it's go right back to 0. One of the important things that my refactoring generic type help us is we can reset the values of so many scriptable object not just one of that and i will show you by creating another scriptable object let's call it enemy so in here let's delete moral behavior and ask scriptable object I will copy those code from the character to set you guys some of the time. In the ability, I will create an scriptable object of the enemy. I will call it Jack. And for the Q count, let's change this to 5 and Joe to 6. In here, in addition to the character, I can just loop to the enemy scriptable object. There you go. And similarly, I can just using a for loop and I'm gonna pass also that is the also scored the resetting to the enemy and I'm gonna refactor this to enemy yeah that's fine that's correct now let's see in the editor with the shows of character uh, if I have the Q count 6 and the check of the enemy have the Q count 5 now I will reset all of that you see that's all that's come down to zero so this way if it will help you save you a bunch of time and it will help you avoid any kind of mistakes or error because it's all the machine that is the end of my video 
If you guys learned something from this video, please consider like and subscribe. Please share those videos to your friends. Thanks and goodbye.